Narayana is also a LIA professional in the beginning and he is a former librarian information entrepreneur and information service and product developer uh, uh, rolled into one. He is the founder and director of Informatics India Limited, a leading information product and service company established in 1980. Currently, he is Institutions such as Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore, HMT Bangalore, Smith and Clean French, Bangalore, about seven years before promoting his brainchild uh, informatics, which is the first and the foremost information service providing uh, company in the entire country. He is also associated with the several professional academic bodies connected with the LIS profession and information industry. So to mention, uh, Instrumental in uh, starting uh, Infotex 1993, Infotech 93, first national conference on digital libraries. He is the recipient of uh, Young Information Scientist Award, the government of Karnataka conferred him the best librarian award also. He, one more important thing we would like to place before uh, on the table here that uh, Mr. Henry Satyanarayana was mainly responsible for promoting LIS uh, Karnataka Library Association. He rejuvenated the Karnataka Library Association and gave a very uh, lively look for the uh, also. Now, with this brief introduction, I request uh, Henry Satyanarayana to take the uh, floor and uh, kindly uh, take his uh, start his talk. Thank you. Good afternoon, friends. Uh, let me begin with thanking uh, uh, Dr. Konur and his uh, friends and Anand uh, for uh, organizing this program on behalf of LS Academy and uh, NCSI Net. Uh, friends, let me also wish you a very safe time in this uh, COVID period. Take a good care, staying at home as much as possible. The topic of the webinar, you know, it's a series of uh, program uh, going for about next couple of weeks. It's packed with a lot of uh, interesting uh, uh, speakers and the topics. I'm sure you will enjoy over the next three weeks. It is well conceived program. I congratulate and compliment uh, Konur for this uh, interesting uh, <coughs> program he has conceived and implemented and it's the most appropriate program for the occasion. Friends, uh, talking on the subject, I don't have a very structured presentation. I'll be walking you through a set of slides. I haven't prepared for any kind of a structured talk. I will tell you a couple of stories that I know. And uh, I'm beginning with a question. Is LS profession ready for the growing opportunities in the information science market? Uh, Dr. Konur has well positioned this inaugural program titling as a uh, job opportunity, the job market for LIS. I just wanted to figure out what is the jobs around the world. I was wondering where to go for that. And what I found was uh, IFLA has uh, mapped the libraries all around the world. As you would see on the screen, around the world there are about 26 lakhs libraries which employs something like uh, 1.6 million full-time staff. I thought this would be at least uh, 52 lakhs, which means we have less than one staff per, per library. And of course, most of the, out of 26 lakhs, uh, uh, almost 20 lakhs are uh, school libraries. I was uh, more curious about uh, the Indian data shows that there are, uh, Mm, 3.2 lakhs people employed. And uh, uh, more than 3.2 lakhs people employed. We don't know where all, but interestingly, the, there is no data absolutely 
segment wise like uh, academic libraries or public libraries they just have listed some 3 lakh school libraries uh, which means we have very little data collected by any international agency and i was trying to figure out whether we have some data available at least at the output level when i, I turn to some uh, higher education document now what i found was uh, the lis manpower output in india is interesting for the last 5 years about 1.18 lakhs people have passed out of uh, various library schools both at undergraduate level and postgraduate level there are a lot of undergraduate programs happening this is out of 2.1 lakh 2, 2 lakhs plus uh, students who are enrolled during these years which means almost half of them as they join they just perhaps leave in between this must be happening perhaps at the undergraduate level but the question is where all they are getting the jobs if you are producing uh, almost uh, on an average of uh, uh 30000 people are you able to see you know i'm just walking through this uh, figures once again i'm coming back to the figures now uh, where we have about average 30000 students uh, <clears throat> coming out of our uh, schools library schools and we really don't have any idea in literature who is where what kind of job market we have whether all these uh, 30000 plus people coming out really get a job and what is the job market today is it a surplus market or a deficit market absolutely no evidential idea i think this is a right area for dr konnur's institute to take up as a research project in collaboration with uh, any library school or research group <clears throat> and uh, build a base to understand what is the real current market for lis professionals in india so friends where do library librarians go to seeking career in library and information science you know what is exciting to me is lis i part information science part the information science part entered the library science education somewhere after we did our library science program somewhere i think in the uh, uh, 90s i guess uh, now i look at two types of information library centric information and non library centric information and when you look at the whole librarianship the origin of librarianship is in scholarship that's largely curating and managing the content the scholars produce that's the history there is a close bond between the libraries and the scholarship and research in institutions but that's how academic libraries have gained a lot of now in the second phase of library science growth driven by the technology revolution particularly ict revolution a lot of uh, like a lot of information growth has happened in the non library centric world and that world is very large today if you look at uh, now i will walk you through uh, in uh, when you look at the employment opportunity today in the second part that's a non library centric information area the opportunity is tremendous i don't have an exact figure for you to say but i would say that it is several multiples of uh, library centric information i will come to that and now Uh, let me also we don't even know how many librarians who have passed out of the lis have really gone to non library centric information segment of the market we keep hearing the story lis professionals have a story let me 
tell you the stories of three personalities. One is a great celebrity. You must be known, Brewster Crane. He loves to call himself digital librarian. I'm sure all of you must have heard about the Internet Archive, which is the world's largest archive, I would say, global archive of whatever is on Internet. And very interestingly, Brewster uh, Carl uh, Kale, he graduated in library science. Pardon? He graduated in library science from Simons College, Boston. And he also did his uh, education, graduate education in computer sciences and engineering in MIT. MIT is a very famous school. And what is important is he is a developer of world's internet repository, the largest in the world. Now, uh, this he is a great celebrity who is a product of a library school. Let me give you another example. A person who is in the industry today. Now, all of you are familiar with, uh, I mean, at least people might know like Eugene Garfield. It was a great product. Every researcher used to carry, and uh, nobody would want to miss current content. Now, current content has lost out over a period of time for whatever reason. And it became almost a kind of a disappearing kind of a product. And, uh, but today, this gentleman called John Shugan, who is a library, who came out of the library school at uh, Missouri University, he has reinvented current content and started a company, which has established a very good market. It is a typical online table of content browsing service. He has found a new market by ingeniously devising a very innovative, intuitive user interface. That's what he did. Now this is, so library schools can contribute to the industry product developers. Now, at home, I think this screen is something you are all familiar with. You may be guessing why I put this screen. You know, uh, there is a homegrown person from the coming out of an LIA school, a very interesting personality. He did his library school from uh, 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 Coimbatore, and he also did his uh, uh, postgraduate education from DRTC, all of you know. And he worked in, uh, in fact, he worked in our company for five years. And he worked in a couple of IT companies. Today, I would be surprised. He is heading a division of TCS. And uh, he loves his profession, library profession, so much. He was his entire uh, success to the library science profession and in what he is doing today. He developed a market for TCS which was just around $40 million when he joined, took it to $500 million today in the area of uh, content services and enterprise content management. Now, friends, these three stories are, should be inspiring for all of you, the current generation of librarians. Now, when um, most of the librarians, you know, particularly I mentioned about Kort, you know, Mr. Kote, he was very active in the KM group, Bangalore management group, where a lot of librarians used to participate, founded by Madan Mohan and others. Now, uh, if you look at today, the entire library world, the focus of library world is managing knowledge. And the knowledge horizon is very huge. There are so many unanswered questions in our world today. We know very little, we have discovered very little of what is in the knowledge for eyes and hidden. In that world is what I consider information world is, which I call the information universe, which is very huge. Now, how huge it is, I will let you tell you. In this information universe, 
we have the world of library and information science. And what is the size of library and information science? It's about 3% of the entire information universe world. But very interestingly, LIS, library and information science, is one of the few professional programs for historically for a long period of time which has nurtured and nourished the world of information science. Whereas now, a lot of engineers, engineering schools teach information science in very many ways. Now, I come from the information industry. When I tell you that information universe is very huge, I can give you an idea of what this huge universe is in terms of size, in figures. Now, the global information industry, which produces and uh, distributes products and services to libraries and the industry and the corporates and what and public and whatnot, it is almost close to one trillion dollar. One trillion dollar in is nine eighty seven billion here. One trillion, one thousand billion. It is almost half of the GDP of India. Th that is the size of global information industry. Now the library centric information, what I call, is about less than 30 billion. Look at this. Around the world, in very many ways, in very many sectors, which can open up opportunity for LIS school output. If I, which is a very exciting word, is really addressed in a very different way by the library schools of the day. This is a kind of a segment wise analysis which has got the, the information world is distributed across the media and marketing, financial information, legal, regulatory information, and we call STM, science, technology, and healthcare, education market, which includes human resource development, training, etc., and content distribution market. That is aggregation and distribution. So uh, this gives you an idea of uh, where the LIS stands today and the opportunity at a macro level. I am giving you, you know, a macro level view high level view. Now, let me also tell you something interesting, like every profession, every industry has associations. In US, there was an association called Information Industry Association long ago. And uh, there was another association called the Software Publishers Association. About 15 years ago, these two associations, Software Professionals, Software Publishers Association and Information Industry Association, merged to become Software and Information Industry Association. It's very interesting because for you to understand how the world of information and software, information and information technology are intertwined, embedded, information, cannot exist today without technology. A technology has no business if there is no information at all. Now, to give you an idea, this is the members of this, uh, this Society for Information, this uh, Information Industry Association, <coughs> a Software and Information Industry Association. And when you look at the members of this association, which includes uh, Google, Adobe, ProQuest, and our traditional companies, you know, that you are familiar with like ProQuest and Elsewhere, Relics, Thomson, they are all rubbing shoulders with IBMs and the Oracles and the Googles. Which means, technology are inseparable. Now let me come back to the career growth opportunities in the IS and T world. So I decided instead of limiting the scope for LIS world, 
which has a structure program for information in information science uh, instead of looking just within LIS let us look out now let me give you walk you through an example again a story where the opportunities exist if you ask me a question to suggest a few companies where you can apply tomorrow I can't give you a list of companies it all depends on one skill sets etc now in the COVID world today some interesting thing is happening in fact every publisher is sending you uh, free access to the COVID information every site has got a display of a COVID 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 but there's one group which has gone about very seriously to address COVID related information issue at a much much deeper way deploying artificial intelligence and machine learning when we talk about AI and machine learning with so much of information available in the coming days it will be impossible to manage information without AI and machine learning techniques and let me give you an example of literature that is the the world of scientific literature that we are all familiar with now there is something called an initiative called covid 19 open research data set it's not about the specifically the data set they use the word data set for a reason i will come to that this very interesting you see the screen here which is by a semantic scholar uh, which is one of the major uh, portal for uh, um, accessing open access content it's a free site like many in the world today now to discover new insight about the novel coronavirus an initiative was started by Allen Institute uh, for artificial intelligence this you know Allen Institute for artificial intelligence was started by Paul Allen who was a co-founder of Microsoft along with Bill Gates and he founded the Allen Institute which today does a lot of research in information related area in fact they have an excellent database on information technology literature database which is accessible free to the whole world uh, which has citation data also now this particular COVID-19 open research data set is a collaborative initiative of Allen Institute and uh, you know the Facebook man Zuckerberg's initiative he has got an initiative Microsoft research and uh, Kaggle and the Georgetown University these are the seven agencies who got together the whole idea was to put together all that is published in literature scholarly and research journals beginning even with the preprints because people are now looking more at the preprint since it will be there even much before uh, it, it gets published so picking up the information from the both published and unpublished sources of information they have built a port they have built a site and uh, this site is very unique with about 75,000 articles already and like any other site there are so many database sites search sites what is so great about it and why should I be talking about this particular site selectively and that is where LIS professions can find new insight in uh, finding new opportunities elsewhere now this site can answer questions like does hypertension increase the risk associated with COVID how does it answer you know it the using the data available the content available in the all the published articles uh, where the full text is passed you know it uh, with every retrieved relevant articles it also picks up the specific portion that is very relevant to the questions you are asking and interestingly i mentioned in the right in the beginning uh, uh, the name of uh, uh, the internet archive um, uh, uh, invent developer uh, Bruce Kale. he was the one who developed he had a company called alex you know alex which was acquired by uh, amazon he founded alex and he sold it to 
Amazon, where Alex, the technology was developed by him for question answering. It is something similar but more deeper, using a semantic, uh, you know, language capabilities and using NPL techniques. Now, this is, it is not just at the search level, they wanted to go beyond. They wanted to really get the complete information, you know, uh, it is this, but also extract the content, you are all, and synthesize, analyze and synthesize the knowledge in every published literature. That analysis and synthesis of knowledge. If you go back to the world of Ranganath and in those days, we used to be told about one of our, you know, functional responsive activities should be as librarians, as information professionals, to analyze and synthesize information. We largely worked at the metadata level, which is very important. Now, while metadata is structured, how do you structure the text? That is where a lot of technology is required. A lot of search engines are available which indexes the full text. But it is all like giving Google kind of a result. Extracting, mining, extracting, analyzing the text and synthesizing to extract the knowledge out of the text is an area which the world is extensively working today using AI and machine learning techniques. And what this project did called the COVID Open This Data, they also had competition. They set out a competition, opening invitation. Look, there are several problems about COVID today. Everybody is stuck. We don't know its incubation. There are conflicting news. We don't even know the nature of this disease, its character of this virus, and character of the nature of this disease. And it's so much important to quickly get whatever is coming out from the labs, quickly analyze and synthesize and make it available in very many different ways. For that, they set out a competition. Now, this competition is very important. The, uh, the competition was, uh, and they had about 500, they set the tasks. What you see here is the tasks. There are some uh, 18 different set of tasks, like create summary tables that address these factors. All this to be addressed all these tasks related answers, issues to be addressed by analysis of the content published in literature. Those 75,000 articles which is growing every day on COVID and other type of literature. Now, these, on these tasks, about five, uh, people are told, people specializing in uh, developing information products and services, the technique for extracting, analyzing, mapping, and for, uh, they were told to come out with technologies to do it faster and better where machines can answer questions in real time. Now, these are all the kind of task submissions. They were, you know, if you, I can give a small list here for you to read, like COVID-19 literature clustering, research engines, topic modeling, finding related articles in a different way, text analysis with sentences embedded, and a lot of these things, as you say, demographic observations of uh, how the pandemic is escalating, a mesh embedded knowledge graph, NLP text mining. Like this, there were several uh, pro development projects were submitted by these 550 people. Even from India, I see half a dozen people from IIT, Dhanbad, and quite a few other places. So now, why I'm giving you this example, this should give you an idea. This is typically the kind of projects the library schools should be doing if the, they have to look at a larger market opportunity outside the library world, where a lot of non-library-centric information science activities are happening. I have given the reference of this one article, which uh, here I have given in this, that should give you, you can visit that article and also the site address also I have given here. Now friends, to end my talk with these stories and illustrations, now I will re-emphasize that the job market for a life profession in India 
it requires a serious research. Second, now I already know we are all meeting today like this, and uh, focus will shift now onwards faster from physical to digital library. Although I personally would love a physical library uh, coming from a different generation, although I am in the business of uh, digital information more from the beginning, a physical library has its own value. However, much we love it, I guess, and uh, it is going to bypass uh, the, the digital world which completely take away physical library space. And uh, this battle is going on. Forget about life, physical libraries, the campuses will disappear. My friend, uh, uh, Professor Kemparaj, you will agree with me. Now, in this City seminars. Now there is a, there are two levels of repositioning, two ways of repositioning. The libraries have to first look in uh, internal, inside. They have to shift from library and information center manager's role, which is largely the current library role, to institutional information managers, because every institution has so much of information management activity. In fact, uh, our friend Dr. Anand is already setting an example in taking care of uh, data management in a very interesting way. He is another example of how he repositioned himself in GE as well as in IAS itself now, expanding his role. Now, second, look out. And look at shift from, a shift is possible from the user side to provider side of information. I gave the example of the guy who, uh, you know, developed Browsini. Now people shifting from the library schools to industry. Now, but this requires, this entire repositioning requires a total rehaul. My friend, Professor uh, Kempraju is here with us today and he is uh, in his current position as the vice chancellor. He can bring in influence on the UGC. And I said total rehaul in the LIS curriculum, it should be of the kind way our boys and girls in from LIS school should be able to, you know, handle the kind of project I just showed you. Today, libraries only provide information that somebody has produced. Now, you just heard uh, from uh, uh, Vishal, even the publishing companies are transforming. Elsewhere is no longer calling themselves as a publisher. They have repositioned themselves as an analytics company, Res information research and analytics company. So it is very important to reposition, to expand your market to ISNT, that's the information science and technology job market. So the future of LIS mark, job market is more in IS and T. But of course, in India, you have an advantage because the world library, even in your certification, the library and information science is very, is very important because it's of UGC recognition. But that is where things have to change. Now, another important thing I would like to say is, when you get into the IS jobs, the domain knowledge is very important. Increasing the information science world is becoming specialty centric. In the sense, the growth is happening in specialty domains. Each specialty domain has different requirements for different kind of technology and information handling activities. So a combination of the uh, domain knowledge, which one can acquire while on the job, but in some areas one has to have, if it is an area like medical informatics or bioinformatics, you can't really get involved in information handling activity unless you have a life sciences background by education. So, and that will be increasingly so in the near, in the future. So domain knowledge and the which, which is a prerequisite, I would consider, and the additional technical skills for 
knowledge organization and knowledge management where there are several tools and technologies available friends with this i would like to thank uh, uh, punur his academy and uh, dr anand and uh, his friends at the national center for uh, information as an ncsi net and uh, i thank you all for listening to me how i wish i had been able to see all of you neither you can see me you can see me but i can't see you you know for a speaker seeing the audience itself is a great inspiration to speak maybe i would have spoken better i hope i am able to convey something useful to you thank you very much yeah, thank you very much uh, uh, satya uh, for giving us a brief profile of our professor in class and the opportunities which are and the future post covid scenario and the uh, elite profession has to revamp re its uh, entire structure to make uh, requirements of the um, the post covid environment and uh, uh, can i request uh, dr sam pulya to um, moderate it and give give uh, to some of the questions which he has moderated sam pulya sir Yes, good afternoon, sir. Uh, good afternoon, Sadhana, sir. There are few questions. Uh, I have just okay. combined them, and uh, one is that: Is there any LIC LIS competency map is available? Good afternoon, sir. Could you unmute the video? Yeah. Uh, can you uh, can you say it again? Can you repeat the question? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Is there any LIS? Competency map is available so that the students can know that what kind of competency they can build upon. Even though it's not taught in the LIS school, I am not aware. I think uh, the LIS school, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, teachers should be able to answer the questions. Okay. I okay. think Professor Temporaji will be able to answer. Yeah, uh, so if you can answer, Anand here, there are competency models and skill set models. By by professional associations, particularly uh, the UK uh, uh, British uh, Library Association, which is ne renamed as a CILP, they have a competency model, and the SLA, Special Library Association of USA, has a fantastic competency model developed. Many corporate well libraries they follow it. Now there is a second question. I I don't know whether it's see that I think some teachers can answer. It is about the LIS schools. Are are they positioned to train the uh, manpower to compete with the tech savvy uh, professions? So I yeah, I, I, uh, LIS schools. When I look at to the lim to my limited knowledge, LIS schools uh, faculty are largely drawn from the. Uh, library schools itself uh, after their post graduation and phd now a lot of these uh, kind of things i have been telling you requires a very close collaboration with the uh, computer science department and other groups not just computer science even the management group the linguistics group it's entirely multidisciplinary in nature which means the lis schools may have to change the profile of uh, teachers itself uh, and also go for more collaborative approach with other departments if you look at it it has happened extensively in us in the, when when you look at some uh, 60 plus schools in india in library schools all of them have library and information science department or school in us today out of some uh, 70 plus schools i guess uh, around now uh, Hardly about fifteen of them use the word library. Library, and not that they don't teach libraries uh, about library management. They do teach about library management. So uh, I hope I answered this question. Uh, Satya, yes. please uh, um, remove the slides from the. Stop sharing the slides so that uh, you will be coming on the full screen. Okay, I will just. Uh, Will there any more next questions? Yes, sir. There is one question. As a information industry industrialist, what is your your views on the role of libraries in the post COVID digital era? I think the example I gave you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, the kind of uh, you know uh, 
information analysis and synthesis right moving beyond metadata yes. and not ignoring metadata in effect you are creating metadata for the text itself by restructuring the text that is one part the other part is learning the techniques of uh, you know how mining and extracting information and ability to synthesize a lot of which will be done by machines now how do you develop tools and technologies for machines to understand this in effect we have to become part of that group okay sir thank you sir thank you there are no no more questions sir actually they they are interrelated kind of a thing.